We saw previously that the three sorts we've worked with, the bubble sort, the selection sort, and the insertion sort, are all order n squared sorts. So the amount of work that they do grows as the input size squared. Now we want to talk about a sort that does a little bit better than that. And this is the shell sort. It was uh, created by a guy named Donald Shell. And it's also called the diminishing gap sort. And that's a, a more descriptive name of what it does. And the shell sort is really weird in some ways. It actually does insertion sort repeatedly, but it winds up being faster than insertion sort. And the reason it's faster is because it does the insertion sort on small pieces of the array. And remember that insertion sort is remarkably fast if the array is close to sorted. So it works on small pieces and gets the array closer and closer to fully sorted so that by the time that it does a full insertion sort at the end, it's really fast. The, uh, you wind up having these, it's called the diminishing gap sort because there's kind of a gap that sets these smaller subsets. So what I'd like for us to do is go ahead and write a shell sort. In fact, we can copy our insertion sort. Let's see. And we're going to create a shell sort. Now, the, cell, the shell sort typically starts with a gap that is equal to half of the length of the array. And what winds up happening in the shell sort is instead of comparing basically treating the whole array as, as something you're sorting, you will take elements that are separated by this gap and treat them as kind of little arrays that you're sorting. And then the gap's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually gets down to one. Because the gap is kind of gonna work in an odd way, we're actually going to use a var and a while loop for the loop that controls what the gap is doing. So I'm gonna start off with this gap being equal to the length of the array divided by two. And then we're gonna have a while loop that goes as long as the gap is greater than or equal to one. It has to go down to one because when the gap is one, we're doing a normal insertion sort. And it turns out that normal insertion sort, because it's happening there, that is the thing that guarantees that we're going to have a fully sorted array. We'll go ahead and indent these values. The other thing that needs to happen is we need to change our gap. Now, when the shell sort was originally proposed, it was proposed to have the gap be cut in half each time. And it turns out that's not quite ideal. We do better if we make the gap uh, small a little bit faster than that. And the main thing is we don't just divide by two because because of some aspects dealing with number theory and the fact that you have things that are uh, you know common divisors of stuff so that you wind up hitting the same subsets over and over if you always divide by two. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to take the gap and we're going to divide by 2.2 and then we want to round that value to the nearest integer and then call 2 int. We don't just call 2 int because that does a truncation, which we don't want. Uh, we want to round first and then convert that value to an int. So what needs to happen inside of here? Well, it turns out we have these values of one. So i is the index of the thing that we are going to push backwards in here. It starts right now at one. Well, I don't want to start at one. I want to start at the gap value. And then j is not going to be i minus one, it's i minus gap. Lastly, there is one other value of one in here that we're going to switch off to being the gap value. So we start off at whatever our gap value is, and we are going to then run backward through the array moving at steps of that gap. 
and doing the same things we would normally do for an insertion sort. Actually, we have one other one there that needs to be switched to, to being a gap. And so as long as our temporary value is less than what we're looking at in the array, we're going to push the value back by the amount that's equal to the gap, and then we move back by, by that amount. Because gap winds up being one, the last pass is exactly what we had for our insertion sort. Okay, how about we see if that is happy. Let's do run Scala, we'll load in that file, see if I messed anything up. Okay, val arr equals array.fill. Once again, we'll make 10 numbers that are all random. Shell sort of arr. I have an array index out of bounds in here, which was caused, it says line 14, but that's not necessarily, you can't trust that when you load things in. Array index out of bounds. How about we take these two lines of code and put them there, uh, print line, okay, now we can do this outside of here, we should get, uh, whoop, Val arr new insert val arr equals we get a nice exception line 54 in here oh yep indeed I missed one of the ones that needed to change to a gap for where we're storing things back in Okay, so if this worked, this should be in sorted order. 0 0.17, 0 0.2, 0 0.31, 34, 344, 35, 41, 86, 5, 866, and 92. Indeed, that's sorted. Now, we have this. What happens if you try to visualize the shell sort? So we can take and we can copy our shell sort And we can go back to the code that we wrote previously for visualization. And we can insert, insert our shell sort. We can add the graphics context. Into here. And we can bring in the two lines that we had, and they should actually go nested all the way into here. So they're actually nested one level deeper because we have that while loop on the outside. In order to make this work, we need one more button, a shell button, we'll do the shell sort. Okay. And this should allow us to see what the shell sort looks like. You can tell that looks very different from what we've seen before, but basically each gap winds up making that more ordered. And you can already tell that ran so much faster than what our previous sorts did. In fact, it ran so much faster 
it might even be worth making it so that we have more values in there so that you can look at this again. So when I click the, the shell sort, note what happens first. It almost looks like a wave passes through. The, the width of that wave is the gap. Okay, and so the gap started off being half of this that just went through and it very quickly took kind of a whole bunch of little subsets. And every time this winds up getting closer and closer to fully sorted until we're done there at the end. So that's the shell sort. It's a really cool sort. It's actually faster than our other sorts. It is a bit more complex to write and so you have to worry about debugging it.